Thank you very much. I, I do have a bit to say that this application does affect um, my ward in particular. I, I, I've always argued that the difficulty in this application, I mean, her credit cross application, is that the running period is so lengthy, I think it took about 20, 25 years at yes. one stage, that every our whole society, the way of living and beliefs will change so much that the application has to be so flexible so as to take that into account. And indeed, that's exactly what Mr. Kelly said in his introduction. He says that the original application was flexible enough to um, effect changes um, depending on circumstances. And that's why we have a section 73 application tonight. <coughs> but you know, regeneration is not the monopoly of developers or with respect to the town plans. I, I believe the residents are partners in all of this. And the changes that have been proposed tonight are all one sided in my view. They all come from the developer and nothing comes from the residents except that they come along tonight to voice their concerns, raise in my view legitimate objections, but to their credit offering solutions as well. And I do hope the committee listen to what the residents have to say and take it into account. <coughs> What, what, what we're going to sell this evening is this, I don't know how to describe it, this living bridge uh, as the key, wonderful new proposal um, that overrides everything else. I, I refer to it as Barnett's very own Ponte Vecchio. Uh, <laughs> without the sun, without or, or, or jewellery. Um, but I, I, I made a serious question that I was asking Mr. Jones about the weather and the winds across a six-lane highway, not the Ponte it's not the it's not the river there. So I, I'm not impressed by that. But I, I, I want to detail now on, on the BQ open space because I, I don't want to monopolise this meeting. Because I, I think the committee ought to be aware of the history. And I, I was around in 1986 when, when it all happened. Um, food, food giants is being queued, um, what it's originally called, um, Mr. Smith, um, who promised similar things to, to many developers but never, never delivered. Um, but the one thing we managed to prize out of that developer was a section, well, section 52, now section 106 agreement to provide a green space in front of being queued. And the reason why that was provided was very simple. Cricklewood was deficient in green space. And what was relevant then is even more relevant today. We also had a fight to determine who actually owned that piece of land. Barnett denied ownership for many years. And I think at the end of the day, some, some arrangement was made with Crown Estates and finally passed to um, <coughs> London Borough Barnett. London Borough Barnett owns it and therefore controls it. One of the speakers said it was described as scrubbing, but I think some confusion about another piece of land by the railway bridge, um, which is not owned by Barnett, um, but seems to be described as part of open space. Literally, no people worry that piece of land that's only flooded with water by the bridge. It's certainly not open space. And what has happened over the last few years is that 
the residents of Kipplewood have got themselves together, and we've seen tonight that's not in many individual speakers, it's speakers we have to speak on behalf of local community groups, and have made determined efforts to uplift Kipplewood into an area where people are beginning to feel proud of their community and are beginning to make sure Kipplewood is on the map. And you see these, you see these photographs. These are real, these are not artists' impressions. This is not, this is not a void slope. I think this council owes a duty to the residents of Kipplewood to protect their own yeah. respect. Tonight is the question, the answer to the question I put to Mr. Joseph about the future use of that space. And I have to say this I get the impression that the developers are playing fast and loose with the use of that open space. Is it going to be a health centre? Is it going to be a new growth treatment centre? Is it going to be for residents in camps from Whitefields? Nobody knows or they know they're not prepared to say. Why is it we've brought forward to phase one? Again, no real explanation has been given. And I would say that the developers are so vague and the risks are so high that we should tonight reject any plans that means there's going to be developments on this open space. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else would be an outrage, an insult, and a kicking the teeth to local residents. Um, um, I don't know whether people speak up for Brent Terrace. Um, I will, because I know Brent Terrace. It's, it's not in my room, it's adjoining. Again, the residents there <coughs> articulated their concerns about how their green space is going to be protected. How it's going to be taken away. I remember fighting a battle 10 or 15 years ago because somebody tried to put a hole into the hedge. And, and I think it was then that we got that hedge um, listed as an edge hedgerow. Hedge Rent Town is a very important location in London Borough Gardens, very close knit community who do their best to survive in difficult circumstances and their green spaces are as precious to them as the green spaces are to the residents up in Totchbridge. I'm not going to say very much more. I, I, I could go on about the chimneys, about the, the, the rail station. Yeah, I have fears about the closure of Pickwood. I have worries about why we're having more basements in the shopping centre, all the effects that will have on the water table. It's an opportunity, I think, tonight to draw a line in the sand for councillors to put their foot down and say to the developers, yeah, we support in principle what we're doing, yeah? but you've got to also give a little. And I don't believe this application gives anything at all, so I'm going to vote against it. Madam Chairman, can I say first of all, a lot of those have spoken tonight.